just when you think he can't be amped up anymore, he gives us a whole lot of love. <laughs> and even though we've seen Reed all week do what he's done, I, I just... I just I love it. He's like, no, no. <laughs> to Rory. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Little things. Over at the fourth, the par three. Sergio with a seven iron at the 189 yard hole. Aggressive wide looks really good. Powering shot. Just beautiful. I was seeing Bros strike it right over the plate. And uh, Roger, this fairway bunker really not easy. Yeah, 197 left to the hole. He's not going to be able to get it there. He's going for it to go. It comes up short and left, so he's going to have to pitch across that. Uh, Left green side bunker. Benson for his par. Remember the second was short and the left of the green pitched it about 10 feet by the hole. Oh, that's, that's it in. So Stenson here with par. Speed uh, still with a par putt left there. Back at nine, McElroy playing also from the left fairway bunker. 172 the hole, but a pretty big lip to get it up across and try to carry it that far. Uh, that's going to miss right. Very high. And short. Yeah. It's going to come up in the function. Spieth now has this putt for a four. It's to have the hole with Henry Stenson. Yeah, this match has been uh, fascinating. It really has. These two uh, have pretty much hold everything that they should have. Fourth, Roger. Yes, went for the hero shot, nearly pulled it off, but landed in the rough and it didn't bounce. 
forward much. And this little chip now will move to his right. And as it breaks right, it green starts to run away. Everything kind of tilted from the left to right on the screen as the golfers play the hole. We got lucky. Chance for Snedeker to cut into the lead. 
Oh, you just sit in the water. We'll go back to the tenth. Oopsies. Where McElroy has the advantage, it's the first match, and it'll be Reed to play his third next, Roger. I'm not sure that that's been determined. Uh, could be Rory away here. Pretty striking hole, isn't it? That's a tough hole location, too. It is in that back left, and Rory is going to be first to go, furthest from the hole. And this has got a pretty sizable break from right to left, John. Mm -hmm. Everything camps that way toward the water. You know, surprised, uh, really, that um, how much that moves left. Well, you knew these two couldn't quite continue the pace that they set on the front nine. We'll see who's got the energy and the focus left to put this one away down the stretch. You still get the feeling it's going to go down to the wire. And the good news is it gave the crowd a little breather. <laughs> That's right. I think they need a rest. That was a good putt, but too much speed. Not bad, but this is a little bit Not going with three and one at this Ryder Cup. Reed working on a two one and one record. And by the way, Snedeker did indeed win that fourth hole over Andy Sullivan for his first winning hole of the day. He's now one down to the Ryder Cup rookie. And while they look this one over at the 10th, let's check in with the final match out. And who knows if it could end up the cup being decided between this duo, Zach Johnson and Matthew Fitzpatrick, the youngest player on either side. And this is just the second match for him. In his Ryder Cup debut. Good shot right there. Oh, he swings the club like it's a feather so fast. On the team, United States of America, Zach Johnson. So a lot of tough touches for the United States out in the last match for the second Ryder Cup in a row. He was out. Last at Glen Eagles two years ago, did not come down to his match, of course, but he ended up with a half with Victor Dubisson and that anchor from Terrence. And he got away with it. So it's the season runner cover against the rookie Fitzpatrick in the 12th and final match of all 12 men. I thought Peter was really young. He had good contact. Might go in. <laughs> good day. Well, I mean, everything looks like it's about to go in. It has in most cases, seemingly. He's third on two. <laughs> and that is the seventh. Just Rose has this putt for a par. Ricky Fowler in there with about 10 feet with a chance for a birdie. Not that easy to put out. I think that may be a concession, yeah, yeah. Looks like uh, that match now all square. Go over to the eighth. Thomas Peters has two putts to win the hole. J.B. Holmes hit it in the hazard here at the par three, so Peters in control. As he's been on a run, remember, Holmes won the first two holes. And that is it, so to grab the one up lead over the ninth. Yeah, Henrik Stenson has a chance to uh, make a birdie here at the long par four, and this would win the hole. Uh, Jordan's just missed from just outside of where Henrik is here. This one's going to turn just a touch from his right. Yeah, no real surprise, David, that this match is all square. Ironically, both players average 4.26 birdies per round, <laughs> tied for third on the PGA Tour in birdie average. So, uh, not a surprise to see them all square after eight. And Henrik trying to capitalize on just a fantastic second shot from the fairway bunker to this point.
Sergio can quiet them by getting back to all square and then potentially taking the lead. Uh, that would have a huge impact on this crowd. So Phil needs to stay ahead if he can. Yeah, you're front loaded their lineup in hopes of getting a fast start, which they have. And U.S. started with their strength and intensity. And Phil is in the middle as the inspirational leader. So Five. Ryan Moore, all square, would leave westward. This was earlier, again, this short par four. And so a birdie there for Ryan, his second and last birdie to have the hole. Putting very suspect yesterday, especially from short range by Lee. Oh. Um, wins this by, so Moore has taken two in the last three. And back at the first, Matthew Fitzpatrick has this par attempt to have the hole against Zach Johnson. A lot of the leads that your pills and blue are just one up leads, so you know, you just a uh, bat of the eye. It could be all square those matches. But Fitzpatrick's a caddy getting low to the ground, Jamie Wayne. But the first Ryder Cup for Matthew Fitzpatrick, he just turned 22 years old. There are six oh, yeah. rookies on this year. He did get to the back half of Darren Clark's lineup. You know, it's obviously he front-loaded it, so there's not a lot of experience, and the guys that are on the back half of the matches really are not the guys playing the best for Darren Clark this week. This guy, Fitzpatrick, in just his second match, and he just rifles that through the break. 